Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I want to do an Alien Conquest build. Huh, you'd never have guessed, would you? <laughs> I've done lots of uh, amendments to official sets in the past, but I don't think I've ever done a full Alien Conquest mock, so that is something we're going to do today. And uh, I think I'd better get on with it, because Robin is getting a little nervous standing here. Don't run, we are your friends. Well, I've already managed to accumulate quite an impressive collection of Alien Conquest sets and sub-builds, uh, and the majority of them are hanging off the ceiling of the Lego room as part of this Alien Swarm. Uh, and the centerpiece of that is the lovely Alien Mothership with its oversized gun in place of the carrying handle. Uh, and that looks absolutely great with the Alien Villainess piloting that. Uh, and then we've got the Alien Android leading this little swarm of tiny craft. Uh, and some of the other ones that are side builds to the official sets and the tripod invader without its tripod legs on. So that is where the majority are looking rather fantastic. Uh, but we had to divert the uh, UFO abduction uh, UFO flying saucer to abduct a farmer because, well, that's what they're known for. And there's one more alien in the field making a crop circle things that we know that aliens do get up to in real life. Uh, and then they're also over here in the Space Tower. Uh, the reason why the majority are invading Earth is not because they're aggressive, it's because they're just trying to rescue this guy, the alien commander who's prisoner in the classic Space Tower. So yeah, technically it is our fault and we've got a few of the troopers going up in the lift uh, and guarding the door and, well, <laughs> possessing locals as well. So that is a really fun scene. So as if we didn't have enough already, uh, I've kind of got a bit of a problem with collecting, as you know, uh, and I've been carrying on getting more and more uh, whenever I see the parts in stores. So I've got three more of the smaller flying saucers that come in the uh, Earth Defense HQ set, 7066. Uh, and I've also got another one of those tripod uh, invaders 7051 just without the legs because I don't need that because they'll be flying in the air so that's really good uh, but just to make it not so one-sided I've also now accumulated the alien defense unit uh, kind of goodies uh, side as well where we have got the absolutely wonderful jet copter this thing is huge actually uh, before I bought it I thought yeah that'll be all right I mean it's a helicopter but yeah so what um, but it is brilliant it is such a good set I love the uh, kind of uh, decor on these wings, these really big stickers, uh, and it's armed to the teeth, uh, and you can uh, kind of trap an alien and put him in storage in the back and all the rest. It's a really swooshable set, so I'm very happy with that indeed. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, dealing with the aliens closer to terra firma, we've got the sort of spaceship version that uh, goes on the back of that alien defense HQ unit uh, to deal with the ones at higher altitude, and that is also arm to the teeth and very swooshable. I love the build with these aerials uh, on the front, kind of built into uh, signal holder bricks, looking absolutely great. Uh, and I've added a jet piece on the back. I've got another one coming to do the other engine. So they will be swooshing there as well. So in the new Lego room, we'll have, well, a lot more uh, flying saucers, some goodies, and all of this stuff attached to the new ceiling. And that'll be against the blue wall backdrop, so it'll look even better, if you ask me. So yeah, we've got an absolute load, but I think we could have even more. Oh, poor Robin. We're too late already. He's been got. It looks like uh, his buzzer's going to get got as well in a minute by the look on that little uh, uh, head clinger's face. Uh, anyway, yeah, we've got a lot of UFOs, but however many UFOs I managed to accumulate from bricks uh, found on bricklink.com, uh, I'm never going to accommodate all of these inside ships. So I figure in a new bigger city, I should have a scene on the ground where some of them have landed. I mean, we've got a bit of an army after all. And the thing is, I don't want to have it as a completely separate scene from our city. I'd much rather include them within the city. So how am I going to get this many people uh, onto the ground, effectively? So <laughs> that was the problem I had to uh, address. And uh, I was kind of thinking of uh, films like Aliens, for example, where the Marines come down, don't they, by way of a kind of drop ship 
a ship that kind of skims through the atmosphere and lands loads of troops. Uh, and I was also thinking about Warhammer 40k, where uh, space marines are often dropped directly into combat in the 41st millennium uh, by way of a drop pod. Now, uh, a drop pod is basically, well, <laughs> quite self-explanatory, a pod that you drop from a orbiting spaceship uh, and it basically plummets through the atmosphere at high speed and then absolutely smashes into whatever is underneath it before opening up kind of the petals of the uh, boarding ramps and outpour loads of space marines, or in this case, alien conquest aliens. Lovely, lovely. So uh, I've been accumulating loads of pieces, as you know, with stickers on that are going to be appropriate for, well, the flying saucers or these builds. And I think I can piece them together to make my own alien drop pods. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I really like the pyramidal shape of those things. So I'm going to try and keep that. I also like the sort of multiple doors. And um, with the doors in mind, that's why I got an absolute load of these on the last haul. And I've moved all of the stickers so they're nice and central and looking in really good condition uh, using my patented hot tea technique. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think they're going to be absolutely great. So uh, I don't know if drop pods have got sort of five petals or eight or whatever they've got, but uh, I'm going to work with four on each one with a kind of octagonal build. So I've got enough to do two drop pods. And I think that'll be a really good scene. Uh, so for the edge of the drop pod, I've got loads of these curved bricks with the Alien Conquest stickers on. I think these ones come from the UFO abduction. I could be wrong. I forget, they're all so similar. So I've been collecting loads of those. I managed to get eight of those for two drop pods. And then I've got a bag of all sorts of other stuff. So I think I can decorate the final item with loads of these stickers that I can move off these pieces onto whichever ones I want. And they've got that lovely logo that I absolutely adore of the big claw uh, kind of coming to grab uh, a person. So maybe they are aggressive after all. <laughs> maybe not they're just here uh, to rescue their commander. Maybe they're also here to harvest the human population. <laughs> you never know. So uh, yeah, I've got loads of good stuff here. Uh, so I say we get going. When I designed this, I tried to keep it in the existing colour scheme of the other Alien Conquest sets as much as possible, with these purples and limes and so on, and a lot of light grey, just so it's instantly recognisable as an Alien Conquest build, <laughs> which should be obvious when all of these guys are pouring out of them, but, uh, you know, it just makes it a little bit more clear. So, uh, yeah, that is just to fill in that hole in the base. Uh, and that's the reason why I've done things like add these trans blue boat tiles to the underside, because a few uh, other sets or other sources have got this uh, detail. So I figured that although these will be resting on the floor and you'll probably never see those boat tiles again, uh, they are in keeping. So yeah, it means a lot to me. <laughs> so uh, the first sticker I'm going to add is these uh, slopes with the logo on. And half of the ones I got that I had to move, they were on upside down, but uh, they won't be here. So I've repaired all of those uh, before starting. Uh, and I've got an absolute load of those, so it might be that we can put more logos on in the future. Uh, and then I can link those sections together with the larger dish pieces, which some of which are in quite a state. You can see when I repaired this one, for example, I just cut off that very frayed corner. It's on the right coloured brick, so it's not very noticeable. But I had to really scrape the gunk and muck off the underside of these when I was realigning them. But I think, given the state they're in to start with, they've come out incredibly well, actually. Uh, right, so there is kind of the base level of the drop pod. Uh, and now I need the opening sort of petals of the doors to come down. Uh, so before I do that, I'm just going to basically give this a bit more strength by pinning uh, these pieces in position with some plates from above. Just make sure I get all of those uh, the same. And then I can put some lime angled plates on. So hopefully that'll hold it together a little bit while I'm building the next bit, which is probably most prone to disaster, which is adding these petals uh, kind of like that. Now these have come from all sorts of different Star Wars sets, and these were hanging off at very jaunty angles as well, but they look absolutely perfect now. So I'm going to attach these uh, to the main body using uh, modified tiles with the clip on, and then I'm going to have a lime bar piece which is surprisingly hard to get hold of, actually. So, yeah, I managed to get eight of those, four for each one, and then I can clip the petal onto that and then have it either in the open position 
or in the closed position for when it's descending from the heavens. So there we go. So I just need to do that same thing four times. I'm kind of regretting putting on the boat tiles now because it's sort of <laughs> moving around when I'm pushing down on it. It would have been quite secure if I'd uh, just left the bottom flat at the beginning. Hey-ho, you live and learn. So there we go. Ooh, yeah, it's fighting me. One, two, three, and four. And this is going to be absolutely caked in stickers, really, especially around the bottom uh, base here. But uh, yeah, I kind of like that. And it will give it a lot of authenticity, I think. So tell me what you think when it is done. But uh, I very much like it. It looks almost like an official set, if I do say so myself. So look at that. Isn't that pretty already? <laughs> And you can have it folded up. I mean, if they were coming down in a folded up position, I might flip these uh, pieces around just so you've got the pattern on the outside because we could arguably imagine uh, that it's got that pattern on both sides. But, uh, yeah, when it's open, it really would be a waste of a sticker. But, yeah, look at that. It's like a horrible alien metallic flower, isn't it? Very nice, though. I like it. So the next stage is to do the kind of thin walls that are going to be holding this thing up, the top from the bottom. I'm just using these one by, hold on, no, two by two by two slopes in gray. And this has got more flat surfaces on, so I could add more stickers on to these surfaces. We'll have to see how it looks when it's done, whether we want to do that, because I don't know. There's probably an optimal number of stickers and adding that again higher up might be too much. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna bring this lime round plate in to act as kind of the bottom of the top section, if that makes sense. Mm -mm -mm. This is where it's fragile and could catapult. No, it's on. It is now secure. So there we go. And a great thing about this shape is that when it's closed, check that out. I mean, there's not too many sort of air gaps, so to speak, or at least air probably wouldn't bother these guys. So uh, too many, I don't know, <laughs> hot uh, gas type holes for when it's plummeting through the uh, atmosphere. But yeah, that looks really good. Whoop, whoop. There we are. Uh, then I'm going to continue that slope on past the plate. So it's got a nice lime stripe on it. And then because we'll have some studs exposed on the outside, I'm just going to fill them in with a dash more purple and trans lime. Very nice. Look at that. These would look great in a under a UV light with that colour. And then just to give it a bit of strength in the middle, I'll add some round bricks there. Very nice. And then let's have a purple stripe. Why not? That can hold all of that together. And it's coming to that pyramidal top. Uh, so I'm going to add a bit of gubbins just to make it look a bit more technical. And that is just going to be one of these steering wheel pieces on a bar piece. And I'm going to put it on that way. And then I'm going to put it into this hole at the top just to disguise that. And then it is almost done. But I think the crowning glory will be another trans neon yellow piece, uh, this dome with a sort of, I don't know, what do you call that? Hexagon, it's almost like a beehive type sort of uh, tessellated uh, top kind of texture. Looks really nice and beautiful under UV. And I'm gonna push that bar in until it's marrying up with the top on the inside. And then that, dun dun dun, is our wonderful drop pod. Wow, <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Look at that from the top. That looks absolutely Amazing, if I do say so myself. So it's quite a simple build. I mean, it didn't take us that long. It took much longer to accumulate the parts than it did to actually build. But I think simple is good for this because this will be a disposable one-use vehicle. And uh, like I said before, I had enough parts to make two. So here is one I made earlier. <laughs> so we've got two wonderful drop pods that can be in different uh, stages of being deployed. We could have one that's empty with all of these troops sort of uh, storming the city and shooting people, <laughs> if that's the want, or stealing stuff from the shop, who knows? Uh, and then this one could be maybe still plummeting from the sky, or maybe I'm thinking it could be doing some real serious damage to our city, because I think uh, in the Warhammer 40k sort of world, these kind of things can be almost used as an aggressive weapon. You kind of drop them where you want them to smash into things because of the rate of knots that they're coming in, leaving a massive crater behind them. So I figure you could have this acting like a kind of wrecking ball smashing into something in the city. Maybe there's the remnants of a hot dog stand 
kind of coming out from all four sides like it's been completely squished by this thing or maybe a flattened car or just <laughs> half bodies of people Ugh. <laughs> getting a bit gory there um or maybe it's ripped the whole front off a building so i'm sort of thinking that maybe a more boring building that we're more familiar with uh, something maybe like a modular that everyone you know knows how it's supposed to look so it'll look very apparent that the front's been ripped off it maybe a boring one like um, say the Grand Emporium building where it's quite uniform across the entire frontage uh, and maybe this could have sort of grazed the front of that and really ripped off some of its facade uh, and then we could have some funny scenes on the inside exposed like somebody trying something on in the Grand Emporium dressing room suddenly being <laughs> exposed to the elements uh, with their literal trousers down <laughs> so that could be quite good fun. Uh, so you should tell me how you think I should uh, include these uh, in the new city in the comment section below. Uh, I'm thinking something funny to do with one of them squishing something with the troops just coming out and something uh, else for the other one maybe that is completely uh, empty and the troops are sort of more widely spread. And I have all of that roughly underneath the sort of corner scene of the alien mothership and everything else. Maybe there's an even bigger mothership that dropped these things in the first place. Wow. So yeah, that is my plan for them. What do you think? Do tell me if there's any improvements I can make, but I'm pretty happy with them. I mean, they're instantly recognisable, aren't they? I suppose the only thing to do now, because I bought far too many of these, is to decide whether I want another set of these stickers, or maybe right up near the top. Well, a little bit of hot tea later, and I've moved one more sticker onto a top piece there. And I think I was right. I think it is a bit too much. I kind of prefer it being plain at that level. It kind of, well, recreates what's already at a lower level. And this being a dark sort of band of colour uh, in the first place, I think it kind of works better down at the bottom. I mean, you could put it on the back of these things as well. But again, you're not going to see them very often. So, yeah, I think I'm going to take that back off keep it for a future build or maybe even a third one of these bad boys <laughs> and uh yeah have it without yeah i think that looks better you know what with all of these aliens i hadn't realized quite how many i'd managed to accumulate just getting them all out now wow uh, and all of the ships that i just showed you uh, earlier i think we're going to need more adu alien defense units because uh, those guys are seriously outnumbered anyway fun build do tell me what you think <laughs> Oh no, Robin's been taken. Well, I hope he escapes before Wednesday, otherwise we won't have a brick haul. <laughs> so anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. Do also comment if you've got any improvement for my wonderful drop pods. And if you value these channels, there are many ways in which you can support them. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, well, we'll be on the Brick Hall O'Clock channel for a Brick Hall on Wednesday before coming back here for another build. So until all of that, see you. Nom, 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 buzzer.